Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. All right, we got that movable bunk out of the way so we don't damage the deck when we load this log up. And this one's another Western Red Cedar. And you can see the, the heartwood is kind of reddish in this. It's not like what you see back east. It's more of a yellowy kind of color. And clearly the bark's not red, but <laughs> we're gonna get this moved up and positioned on the deck. And then I'm gonna roll it around a little bit, look for the stress. Try to get my stress horizontal so that as I mill the log, I can pay attention to where my stress is. You may have heard me say this before, you know, hooks to the right. That's just so that I've got my stress horizontal. I can take off that first cap cut and when I roll it up, I'm going to mill that face off knowing that I'm gonna be milling through reaction wood. If a log is growing on a bit of a hill, it's gonna to try to bend itself to go straight up and down. So the trunk may come out of the ground, kind of perpendicular to the ground, and then the tree will bend upwards. And it may only be very slight, but that side of the log is where you're going to have what we call reaction wood on softwoods. It is a little different with hardwoods, but I mill primarily softwoods. So I, I do mill some hardwoods, just not that much compared to what I do when it comes to the softwood world. I'm probably over 90% softwood. <laughs> a lot of conifers out here. So we get that top milled off. We're gonna roll it up 90. Now I'm gonna mill off the side that has the reaction wood in it. And one of the things that I'm also looking for, and you may notice, is where that main check is in the log. Now I will tell you in this log, due to where the stress was, I really wasn't able to get that check parallel to the deck. And that's where I want it almost all the time. Sometimes, kind of due to stress, you're not gonna be able to do that. But ideally, you're gonna put that check horizontal to the deck and keep it in one board when at all possible. If you don't, that check will expand as the lumber dries. And of course, you're either gonna to have to stabilize it or cut it off. So in this case, I talked a little bit with the customer about it explained where the stress was that I could see. And again, it's really important to put that stress in the log in such a way that when you're taking one buys off of this log, you want them to face bend. You don't want them to crown. And it isn't that you can't mill out a crown later after it dries, but ideally you don't want to do that. If you're milling one by sixes full dimension, like I was here, the customer wants as close to six inches as they can. So if you end up with a crown, which means that the log is bending to the side when it's laying flat, then he's going to have to edge that down. And sometimes you just can't avoid it depending on where you are in the log. But for the most part, if you put your stress so that it is what I would call vertical when you're milling your one by sixes, that means it's going up and down and you're taking one by sixes off one at a time then what that will do is it will present itself in the lumber with a face bend. In other words, it will lift up kind of in the middle or on the ends, but it won't crook or crown to the side. And that's okay because when you're milling, flooring, or paneling, you're gonna nail it down flat anyway, so that's fine. Uh, if you have a crown though, that's gonna have to be edged off, otherwise your boards aren't gonna meet up flat against each other. So that's what I'm looking for. On the, the check, if I could mill that into one piece of lumber, then only that one piece will have that check. In this case, I just didn't think I could do it because of where the stress was, so I knew the center boards coming out of this log were going to have some check in them, with them treated, dried properly. The vast majority of those are gonna be okay. The customer may have to cut off a little bit on the end to deal with that check, but otherwise, he should be able to get away with it. Now, one of the other things I'm looking for as well, and you're gonna see, I'm gonna slow it down, is I'm always looking for where the pith is in the log. Now, a good straight log with no stress will have the pith right in the center or very close to it. And when I'm milling it down, you wanna put that pith right into the middle of one piece of lumber. You'll only have one piece of lumber with that pith, which as I've mentioned previously in other videos, is like a straw up the center of the log. But I'm gonna go ahead and let this run, and then at the end, I'll talk to you about some upcoming stuff I've got going on for you. So stick around, let's let this log get milled up, let's get her done.
All right, we're getting her down now. Last couple boards coming off the mill. So I hope you enjoyed that, folks. It was a lot of fun doing it. I will tell you, I've got a, a couple more videos coming out. Actually, I've got a lot, so stick around. But in one of them, I'm going to show you something called the magic hook. And if you don't have a magic hook, you're going to want one. So stick around. Look for that video to come out soon. We've also got some video coming out from this job where we milled up some big, huge, wide slabs. So that was a lot of fun. So I'll bring that to you as well. And of course, we've got lots more from this job and other recent jobs. One of those, I had to quarter a maple up with my big chainsaw so that we could get it small enough to fit on the mill. I think that's going to be a fun video. So stick around for that one too. They're coming out in the near future. Thanks again for watching, folks. Y'all have a great weekend. The old jarhead out.